Okay, my name is Michael Ryan, and searcher at uh, collectively at the University of Wisconsin Madison and the University of British Columbia. And we are doing a footwear footwear study uh, comparing the effect of of uh, running shoe minimalism and seeing how uh, how much it uh, has effect on injury risk in runners training for a 10 kilometer event. So as I understand it, you're going to collect a uh, hundred different runners with with neutral feet. Mm -hmm and uh, you're going to assess them for pain threshold and their running history and then you're going to give them three different types of shoes three control groups three different types of shoes and they're going to start integrating those shoes into their training for a 14 week period training for a 10 kilometer race what are the shoes that you're going to be using here you can hold them up when you're ready so i'll uh, go one shoe at a time here so the conventional running shoe that we'd say uh, is a you know most people would run in even today is a is a shoe that would resemble this it's a nike pegasus 28 so this is a um, the flagship neutral supportive shoe from the nike uh, running line um, it has uh, as you can see uh, about a probably 22 and a half centimeter thick uh, sole at the heel that tapers down to about maybe 15 centimeters sorry 15 millimeters uh, at the uh, at the forefoot and so there's a bit of a bit of a drop off there uh, you can see that a bit more pronounced on the inside of the shoe uh, we have typical with the neutral supportive shoe there's a sub some stability element so there's a pieces of plastic that give the shoe some degree of in inherent support so if I take the shoe and I try to twist it um, it's going to resist that motion a certain amount the same breath if I try to twist the shoe together um, there's a bit of support in the rockering in the forefoot of the shoe so this allows the shoe effectively to just sort of roll forward and helps to support the forefoot of the foot uh, while the plastic supports the back part of the foot it's a fairly he thick heel counter and um, yeah this is the shoe that typically we've been running in for the last uh, I'd say at least 20 years or so okay um, moving down the minimalist line we then have the Nike Free 3.0 uh, and this is a shoe that Nike made to try to replicate the motion of barefoot running. And uh, they have achieved that mostly through the, the particular design of their sole pattern and, and the siping or the flex grooves that you see on the bottom of the shoe. Uh, probably the first thing you notice if you look at the back of the shoe is that there is no outsole or there's only a little bit of an outsole, there's tiny bits of rubber. But really, you just have a midsole and that factors into the, into the bottom of the shoe. So that saves a, a tremendous amount of weight in the shoe. You've now taken about half of the thickness from the Pegasus off of the sole at the, at the back and there's also not as much of a drop off at the heel. So people aren't getting as much of a heel lift, so their heel will sink a bit lower uh, when they wear the free. Um, but this is still um, you know, about halfway to maybe 30% of what you'd normally find in a, in a typical shoe, in a typical um, uh, uh, um, a, a, a neutral supportive shoe. Um, we're looking at its support though, um, and now we're having a shoe that doesn't have any heel counter really. There's just a bit of um, a thin mesh there. Uh, it's from the support of the forefoot. It now wants to encourage the foot to flex. Um, as well as at heel strike, because of the siping here, um, the whole shoe will split apart, so it will limit the amount of that the shoe will lever, lever the foot to fall forward and fall to the side and encourage uh, and increase some of the, the, the forces that act on the ankle, ankle joint, and that can get, be transferred up the leg when you are running. Uh, so this is um, for the purpose of the study of relative midway point in footwear minimalism. Uh, we don't want to have anyone running actual barefoot because I think that there's some safety issues there on the street, uh, especially not in a formal way, but um, uh, the, I think the next yeah. best thing is in the Vibram Five Fingers. Um, this shoe has a, approximately a four millimeter thick sole at the heel and at the forefoot, so there is absolutely no heel lift in this shoe. You are sitting, uh, the heel is sitting flat, um, and I, after running in these shoes myself now for about six months, I can tell you that it feels like you are running straight on the pavement. And that's, it's a very different feeling, it's a very natural feeling to your running, and, uh, but it does takes some getting used to definitely, um, especially when you start logging um, quite a few miles in at the same time. But similar to the free now, we still have zero uh, heel lift 
or sorry, um, heel counter to the Vibram Five Fingers. There's zero resistance to the forefoot, so again, the shoe is trying to take advantage of all the elastic energy that you would get out of the, uh, the muscles and the soft tissue on the bottom of the foot and at the calf, and um, uh, and there's there's no uh, pieces of um, thick, stiff plastic that would give the shoe a lot of uh, stabilization of, right. from the standpoint of twisting. Um, but it's very low to the Those heel, uh, low to the ground, so you are very stable typically when you hit the ground, and there's a lot of need for a lot of that element anyway. So I guess uh, you know just to finish off, you know what you know maybe just reiterate what you're trying to find uh, when you get through the 14 weeks of people running in these various shoes. So we want to see as you step down in these shoes. Um, previous research has already shown that you're. Um, you tend to run a little differently, and you then that difference in your running gait will impact um, how the forces of the ground and your body weight are distributed on your leg and the position of your legs. Um, and that, in theory, could be preventative for injury. But the other side, and the other question we have is, there is an increase in stress on some parts of your foot, particularly the foot itself and the back of uh, the, the back of the lower leg. And we want to see how people can tolerate that as we gradually increase um, the exposure to these shoes over 14 weeks. So we, we are hoping that um, it's generally it's a positive effect, that people are able to run better, um, they can get better comfort out of the shoes, and get a better running experience by, um, by, you know, by having uh, either of the minimalist shoes. And really what we need to see is some good is more better, or is there sort of an optimum, it seems, for um, this population who has no experience experience in minimalism shoes but have been running for a while, um, you know, is there, is there a, a good way to segue into the shoes?